Hi, my name is David, and now we shall be moving on to the lecture on functional group interconversions, also known as FGIs. Well, after you have settled the carbon skeleton of the compound, the next thing to do naturally is to settle the remaining functional groups. As I mentioned in the previous lecture, do refer to the reaction map, either one you made yourself, or the one provided as, uh, in the last summary lecture by Pauline. Okay, the problem is FGIs isn't, uh, aren't that simple. You have to make sure that the correct functional group reacts when you plan a synthesis, and more often than not, an individual reagent will target more than one functional group, which is why I will be providing you with some tips as to how to make sure the correct functional group reacts, or rather how to get the correct functional groups at the end of the day. Now, the first one is you can use a more selective reagent. For example, you have this compound and you wish to oxidize the alcohol to an acid and nothing more. The problem is, if you choose KMnO4, you end up oxidizing the other side chain as well, giving you this diacid instead of this acid here on the benzene ring with another alkyl group. So the solution is to use an oxidizing agent, the uh, potassium dichromate, which only oxidizes your alcohol and not the alkyl side chain. Uh, this is by no means the, the only selective reagent. There are other things such as NaBH4, LiAlH4, which reduce different but similar functional groups. Okay, next we have a change in the order in which your functional groups are introduced. Now, how would that make any difference? For example, you have a compound here and you wish to convert it to this target molecule where you have two reactions. One, substituting this bromine atom using a cyanide nucleophile, and secondly, to reduce this double bond to an alkene functional group using hydrogen gas. Now, what if you decide to use cyanide first? After substituting, you get this intermediate compound, but when you use hydrogen gas, you end up reducing the nitrile as well, along with the double bond, which is not what you want. So, one possible option is to reduce the double bond, the double bond first, since the bromine atom will not be affected by the hydrogenation, after which you can safely substitute the bromine atom with your KC and in ethanol to get the target molecule. Thirdly, Protecting the functional group. Now, this may sound like a rather alien concept to you, but it's not that complicated. Basically, all you need to do is to change one functional group temporarily to make sure it does not react in our unwanted side reaction. For example, we have this compound here, which contains an amine and an alkene functional group. What you wish to do is to convert it to this final target molecule where you have OH and COOH. Well, to functionalize both carbons of a double bond, naturally you will try to use bromine in equal solution where you have a Br and an OH. And supposedly, after having the Br and OH, you will substitute it using KCN in ethanol again to get your acid before hydrolyzing. But the problem is, the nitrogen group will interfere in this reaction because it will carry out an intramolecular substitution where you will get this weird unknown cyclic compound and KCN and ethanol does nothing to it you will not get this compound. So in order to prevent NH2 from interfering, what you can do is to protect the NH2 group. For example, by converting it to an amide with the addition of an acyl chloride. Now this amide group is no longer able to, to carry out this same substitution as the lone on the nitrogen are uh, uh, delocalized into this carbonyl group and it's less available for donation. So with an amide in place instead, you can carry out the exact same reactions, bromine, uh, equals bromine, to get your bromohydrin and then KCN and ethanol to substitute before hydrolyzing the cyanide to give you a COOH. And conveniently, this same hydrolysis will take care of the protecting group as well, which is usually removed at the end. So that is one way you can get your target material. Again, for your A-level problems, it is possible that in the preamble, they, they will introduce a new protecting group for you, say THP or TBDMS. Do not be afraid, again, just because they are new and foreign. Read through the preamble and see what it does. For example, it protects an alcohol and pre prevents it from reacting with an acid to get an ester unwantedly. Or perhaps protecting an, an amine group, but not using this, but another one. Okay? Well, if all else fails, just remake the functional group later. What I mean is, for example, you have a reaction where you cannot protect the one functional group, react the other with, with, the, with the other one, and then deprotect the original functional group. There's no way you can use a more selective agent or 
and you can't even change the order of introducing the functional groups. In that case, use brute force. Just react it the way you want it to. Okay, in this case, you have an alkene in a ring and you have an OH group. What you want to do is to cleave the ring to give you your dye acid and you want your OH group to remain. But within the H2 syllabus, you do not have sufficient reagents which will protect the OH group and then be hydrolyzed again at the end. Well, you might think that it's possible to use the same thing, CH3COCl, to form an ester before you cleave the double bond and then hydrolyzing the ester. But however, using these vigorous conditions of dilute acid heating with flux, your ester will be hydrolyzed as well and it will be oxidized. So when such things happen, don't worry, just whack it. In this case, your alcohol is first oxidized to a ketone, but then there's no problem because you can reduce it again to an alcohol using a selective reducing agent, NABH4, which only reduces ketones and not your acids. Applying the same concept here as number one. Now, the thing about functional group interconversions is that it's simple, but you have to be alert because there are many little side reactions which you may not notice initially and that will cost you marks. So do look out and make sure everything goes as per planned and you'll be fine.